Hi, this is Christine, and welcome to my tutorial for an asymmetrical shawl or scarf on the LK150. I first discovered this free hand knitting pattern on Ravelry called Pirate's Cove by Hillary Designs, and I realized that it would adapt very easily to the LK150. Although the hand knit pattern is done in garter stitch, and of course we will end up with stockinette. But it's perfect for the LK150 because you will use all 150 needles on the bed. Now this is a super simple project, easy enough for even a very new knitter, because all we're doing to get the shape is increasing one stitch on every other row on one side. The eyelets in the middle section give it some texture, and the changing colors give it a lot of visual interest. So it looks much more advanced than it really is. In fact, I think my favorite thing about this pattern is how much fun you can have just playing around with color. For this pattern, you're going to need approximately 220 yards of worsted weight yarn in each of three different colors and what I'm using here are two solid colors of a yarn by Fibra Natura. The yarn is called Lima. And a third one, which is a vintage yarn from my stash called Dyed in the Wool. I chose this yarn because it has both purples and blues in it, and I thought it would be a nice segue between the other two colors. To get started, we have our carriage on the right and have selected the first five needles on the right. I'm going to do a crochet cast on with my latch tool. If you don't know how to do this, there are plenty of tutorials online. And I like to use this one because it gives me a nice firm edge. And we'll thread up and I already know from a previous tension swatch that this yarn is going to knit real nice at tension dial six. You should of course always do a tension swatch with your own yarn to make sure you're getting a texture and a fabric that you like. At a six, this yarn is gonna knit not too tight, not too loose, so it's gonna drape real nice. And always make sure that your yarn isn't getting caught under the carriage and we're going to knit across and hang one claw weight. And then we'll knit back. Now we're gonna start our increasing and the increasing on this pattern is the same all the way throughout. We're going to increase one stitch on the side away from the carriage every other row. We're going to do this very easily with our transfer tool, moving one stitch from the edge over to the left. Then we're gonna go into the heel of the next stitch, lifting it up, and then transferring it to the empty needle. And now I've got six stitches. And then we knit two rows. And again, we move one stitch to the left. Pick up the heel of the next stitch and move it onto the empty needle. and knit two rows. One stitch to the left, pick up the heel, fill the empty needle, and knit two rows. We're gonna continue this until we have filled 74 stitches on our main bed. Now I'll continue and be right back. 
When you get to about 20 stitches, you're going to want to add a little bit of weight on the edge where the transfers are. And if you're having trouble picking up that heel, let me just zoom in a little bit and show you a little trick. We're going to transfer the left one over. Oh, and always make sure that you're transferring completely before you let go. What you can do is take that needle, give it a little tug back, and it gives you a little extra room to get your transfer tool in. And then you lift it up over that empty needle. And knit your two rows. You're going to want to make sure you move your weights up periodically, especially on that increased side, so that your stitches knit off real nice. And you'll notice that we're not real worried about our row counter right now. We're just going to keep knitting in this way until we have 74 needles in work. In this first section, we needed to get to 74 stitches in work. On the LK150, you have 75 right and 75 left. So it was very easy to see when I had 74 because it's one less than the needle number one right. Now you can see also that I have enough stitches on there that I'm using a cast on comb for a little extra weight to nicely distribute some of the weight along the length of the bed. I have it all the way to the right edge and I'm continually moving the claw weight up along the increase edge. The other thing I wanna show you is that on the increase edge is nice and flat, not curling. And that is the effect of doing that increase by lifting the heel of the next stitch and moving it over to fill the empty needle. It leaves a nice edge that does not roll at all. Of course, our straight edge is going to be curling like it always does, but we'll deal with that later. Because now we are into the fun part, adding in our next color. Before we begin our next section, we're going to set our row counter to zero. Now we're adding in our second color and do a little bit of striping. I have my nice variegated yarn all threaded up and ready to go. Throughout the whole entire shawl, we're going to keep increasing one stitch on the left every other row, the same as we've been doing while we are creating our color changes. Unfortunately, on the LK150, we have to do this manually. So we take out color number one, bring it around and hook it on our little yarn rest back here, and then we thread up our next color. I've already done my increase on the left, so now I'm going to knit one row to the left. Now before I knit that row back, I'm going to do one little time-saving step right here and that is to weave my new color in. I have pulled out several needles and I'm just going to hook this tail over every other needle. These will get woven in nicely and will save me a little bit of time later. And now we'll switch back to color number one, the main color, because this stripe pattern is just two rows wide. A word to the wise here is that when you're switching colors, you want to make sure that your yarn 
is not caught under the carriage or tangled on the brushes. If the carriage doesn't knit, don't force it because your yarn might be caught. And then because your yarn will probably have some slack, just pull up slightly on the yarn until the first stitch catches. Knit across, and then back. And then do your increase before your next row. Switch back to the second color. So color changing on the LK does involve a little bit of extra work. Get your two rows. And you can see I'm getting a nice color pattern in there with my variegated yarn. The stripe section calls for eight two-row stripes in each color. So that's 32 rows altogether. Um, I just did 30 and I'm on my last stripe now. So I'm going to change my colors again. and knit my two rows. And I'm now at row counter 32, and I'm on needle number 15 left. And that completes this first stripe section. Now we'll add in our lovely dark purple here, and now it's gonna get really interesting. We're about to start our eyelet section, and this is gonna be a little more work because there will be rows of eyelets all the way across and we're adding in a third color. The color sequence is contrast color one, contrast color number two, back to color number one, and then the main color, and it repeats. We'll repeat this pattern sequence seven times for a total of 56 rows. So I've reset my row counter to zero to more easily keep track. The other thing I wanna show you is that the end of the shawl is getting pretty long. So rather than have it drag on the floor and become a tempting cat toy, I have just clipped it up with a clothespin. Okay, row counter zero, I have done my increase. I have contrast color number one and I'm going to knit two rows. Now I'm going to switch to contrast color number two, which is our purple. But what happens here? We only have two feeders in our mast. There's no place for a third. So we're going to have to manage this manually. Now we're going to move two colors to the back. And because I'm adding a third color in, there will be four rows in between two of the colors, and those are going to leave longer loops along the edge. In order to manage that a little better, I'm going to first pull the first needle out on the bed, and then taking the two colors that are out of work, putting them over that needle, and then around the back. It's not going to knit, but it's just going to be captured between the stitches of the yarn that is in work. That needle can be left forward. We're not working in hold or anything. And don't forget that our increases are going to continue as usual. and then hold the new yarn manually.
As soon as the first stitch is knit, you can let go. Just keep it held up out of the way and continue to knit across. Now I've done one row to the left with the purple and we're on to our very first eyelet row. With my transfer tool, I'm going to start with a second stitch in and move it one to the left. I'm gonna do this every other needle all the way across. After transferring every other stitch all the way across, I'm going to bring in all the empty needles back into work all the way across. This is going to give us our nice yarn overs for our eyelets. And again, I'm hand tensioning the yarn and knitting one row back to the right. Now back to contrast color one. And I am again pulling out that first needle, laying the unused yarns over it and around to the back. Then I will increase as usual. and knit my two rows. And now I'm back to the main color. You can see that this is a very busy section. Between the color changing, manually tensioning the third yarn, and doing all those eyelets, there's a lot going on. But you'll find it worthwhile when you see the results. So again, I did my increase here. My main color is in. I'm doing one row across. And this is going to be another eyelet row. So I will begin my transfers, starting on the second stitch from the right and every other needle all the way across. After I've transferred all the way across, I'm again bringing all the empty needles back into work and then knitting back. That was our first eight rows of the eyelet sequence. So now we have to do that six more times. Starting back with our contrast color number one. So along about now, you might be thinking, oh my, what have I gotten myself into? This section is a lot of work and will take you the longest. But as I said earlier, the results really are well worth it. So I am going to continue on and start the sequence once again. I have now finished the eyelet section. My row counter is at 56 and I am at needle number 43 left 
And now that I have completed the eight row sequence seven times, you can see that I have 14 rows of pretty eyelets in between 14 solid rows. So now I'm on to the next section, which is another stripe section, exactly like the initial one. I'm going to reset my row counter to zero and do 32 rows of stripes. This also means that I'm down to two colors. I'm done with the main color and will only be working with colors two and three. So I can cut the main color, weave the ends in, and move on to my stripes. Now I've completed my 32 rows of stripes. However, that left me on my contrast color two, which is my final solid color. So I'm going to do one more stripe of the contrast color number one first. And that's it for changing colors. I can now cut that second color, weave in that end, and move on to the final section. Wow! Without all those color changes and eyelet transfers, this section just flies right by. I continued to add one stitch on the left every other row, just as I've done throughout the whole shawl, and it just zipped right along with my solid color. At this point, I have filled up the whole bed. So you can either end it here and do a bind off of your choice and be done, although that will mean that this edge will roll quite a bit as you would expect. So what I like to do is put a little ribbing on the edge. On this example, I actually stopped one needle short, so at 149 needles, I added another 12 plain rows and then started with the third needle from the edge. I dropped every third needle down for about 12 rows and then hand latched them up. You could also just take the whole project off onto a very long circular needle and do a hand knit ribbing if you prefer. On this one, I thought it would be fun to try something a little different for my final edge. This is an edge developed by our very own Rebecca Stewart, who was kind enough to teach me one day at our LK150 club. To do this, I have knit one row back to the left. I have placed all needles into hold, except for the first three. And I've set the carriage to hold in both directions. I'm going to knit those three for four rows. Then we bring the next three back into work and knit four rows over the six. We transfer the first group of three onto the second group of three We'll hang a little claw weight on there and then bring three more needles back into work. And then we knit four more rows. Now we continue the same. Transfer the first group of three over the second. Bring three more back into work and knit four rows. And we'll continue this across the bed. I'm about halfway across now and let's just take a look at the edge that we're getting. It almost looks like a cable. Looks like the trim is lying nice and flat too. It's curling somewhat but the flat edge will make it easier to give it a little steam. 
And the bonus is that I didn't have to bind off this whole bed of stitches. The pattern is doing it for me. So let me just show you again how that works. I started with three, knit four rows, added another three, knit four rows, and then transfer the first group of three onto the next group of three. Putting the next three into work, I like to do it by slipping those stitches back into their hooks. Knit four rows, move three over. You don't have to slip those back into their hooks. You can just move them part way back into work. I just like doing it that way. It gives me a little peace of mind that those are not going to drop when I knit them off. As I was looking at the side edge, I decided that what I was going to do on this particular one was to continue Rebecca's nice edge treatment down that straight edge that curls so much. When you're doing this trim on the side of a piece, it's basically the same, but instead of live stitches, you're going to pick up and hang stitches from the side. You start with the first three, knit four rows, hang three more, knit four rows, transfer over, and continue. There's no need to hang a weight because the weight of the piece is just enough. Here's our first look off the machine. I finished off the last three stitches just by transferring that last group of three onto the final three needles, knit four rows, and then did a quick loop through a loop bind off. So let's have a look here at our beautiful progression of colors. We've started with our nice lighter blue with a subtle progression into the colors of the variegated yarn. Then there's our beautiful eyelet section with all those nice alternating colors. And from there into a more vibrant strike section with the darker purple. And then finally the plain purple section. This is going to block up beautifully. And as you can see, this is a great way to have fun combining different colors. And now I'll show you some of the other ones I have done. Here we are all finished and blocked. You can see that we end up with a nice sized piece. Here's a close up of that trim. And I really liked how that turned out. I think it was a nice addition to this project because it really ties all the colors together along that edge. This is one way you can wear it over your shoulders, just like a traditional shawl, except it does have that nice, interesting, asymmetrical shape. This is another one that I made earlier, and this is my preferred way to wear them. I like to have them across the front, kind of kerchief style, with the ends wrapped around and secured with a shawl pin. And this is what that one looks like opened up. This was the very first one that I did. It's a yarn called Good For You, E-W-E. -E. Um, and the yarn I believe was called Posy. It has a beautiful drape to it. This one I decided to do a little something different and about halfway through the eyelet section, I just did a few rows straight with no increases. And then I decreased down the other side to have a more 
typical shawl or scarf shape. But I followed the same pattern of stripe sequences and eyelet sequences. This one's one where I just took a bunch of random leftovers that I had. This is a variety of yarns in not only color that I really mixed up good with the stripes, but also um, textures. So I had some smooth yarns, some mohair yarns, some with sequins. Um, there's even a ribbon yarn in there, but it was a lot of fun. And then this is one where I actually added in a fourth color. Uh, once I got through the um, eyelet sequence, I just added in another color and finished the stripes and the solids. So there's really uh, no limit to what you can do with this simple shape. You can alter the striping sequence, you can add more or less eyelet rows, you can change your colors whenever you want. It just really lends itself to a lot of different um, ideas. So I hope you enjoyed this video and are now inspired to get creative with your own. Thanks so much for watching.